Hi everyone, my name is Elizabeth Cook and I am the Instructional Design Librarian here at Citrus College. I am here to walk you through the amazing, wonderful world of research. So I hope you are ready and you have your topics ready to go. And this is the last you're going to see on my face, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen over to the library website. I just feel like it's nice to, you know, see the person who's talking to you. So hi, I'm Elizabeth and here we go. Okay, so you should all be able to see my screen over at the Citrus College Library website. You may have seen our library website before. In fact, I hope you have, but just in case you haven't, there is lots of interesting things you can do on our library website. Uh, you can find out, you know, like cool stuff like when we're here which is Monday through Thursday from 8 o'clock in the morning until 8 o'clock at night and on Friday from 8 o'clock in the morning until 4.30 in the afternoon. We're closed weekends and holidays, uh, but we know that just because we're here in the library doesn't necessarily mean that you are, but you might still need some help from us, right? That makes total sense. Here is our contact us information. There are many ways to get a hold of us, calling, texting, opening up a live chat, emailing, all of this will connect you with a librarian. The good news is, is that everything we're gonna talk about today, you can do from home. You do not need to be in the library to access 99% of the library resources. The only thing you will need is a My Library account. So if you don't have one, we're gonna go ahead and get that set up together. You can see here under students, we have My Library account. I'm gonna go ahead and click on that. And then I get a lot of information here. I'm not going to worry about it. What I'm going to do is click sign in. So when you're working at home, this is what you will see. We ask our students to sign into our databases because uh, they are proprietary for our students. So we want to make sure you are who you say you are. Same way you have to sign into your Hulu and Netflix account. So if you don't have a My Library account, what you're gonna do is click Set, Reset Password, and put in your Wingspan user ID. Um, for most of you, that's probably going to be an A number. Some of you may have a CC number, whatever it is. Type it in, click Request New Password, and then that is going to prompt the system to send an email to your Citrus email with a link, so you'll click on that link and create a library password and you'll be good to go. If you have any questions about that, please contact us here. Okay, so now that we've talked about the My Library account, let's talk about something that's maybe a little bit more relevant to you. You are watching this video because you have a paper to write. This is hopefully not news to you. Um, and you hopefully have a topic all set up, all that good stuff, but you're probably wondering why you're watching this video in the first place. Why do we want you to use library resources? We know that you are perfectly capable of Googling things, right? We totally understand that. But the thing is, is that Google is not always the best place to go for scholarly research for a couple of reasons, right? The first reason would be if I went to Google, and I typed in my topic. I just typed in the topic prison reform. Okay, so the first thing I notice is I'm going to get 81 million results. Now, you do not need that many secondary sources for this paper. I will always recommend having more sources than you think you need, but I am never gonna recommend looking at 81 million results. Then as I scroll through here, I can see my very, very first thing right here is from Wikipedia. Not gonna be super helpful. We are not going to use Wikipedia for scholarly research because anyone can edit it, right? I can go in and edit it right now, and then by the time you watch this video, you'll see my edits and it will just completely throw you off and be very, very difficult for you to get any kind of research done when I've edited the prison uh, reform page to indicate that, you know, prison reform is currently being spearheaded by my pug. So that's not going to be really helpful for you. So we don't want to use Wikipedia. 
can see I have some news stories and just a lot of information, right? So the wonderful thing about Google is of course that I have all of the world's information in front of me. The bad thing about Google is that I also have all of the world's information in front of me, right? I have all of the crap as well as all the good stuff here. So as you're going through and doing research, what you're gonna wanna ask yourself is, is it crap, right? So I'm gonna take you here to a guide on library resources. We teach a whole class on fake news. I'm not gonna go through all that with you right now. But what I am gonna do is show you this beautiful section here where we explain what the craft test is. And the craft test is what you are going to use to evaluate your sources. You are gonna look at it for currency. You're gonna look at when the article was written. Um, you guys are all doing very topical and contemporary topics. So you're going to want to keep your articles within the last five or 10 years, right? If you get an article about prison reform from 1992, it's not going to be super helpful to you because the temperature of society has changed during that time. I'm gonna wanna you know, check to make sure it's about my topic. Is the article relevant to what I'm doing? Uh, you guys are talking a lot about Orange is the New Black, right? And that is great and it's a popular book and it's also a popular Netflix show, one of which is very different than the other. So. What you really want to ask yourself is, is this actually relevant to what I'm talking about? Is it about my topic? You're going to want to know the authority, right? The person who's writing the article, why do they get to write this article? Why do they get to tell you about this thing? Anytime somebody is, you know, purporting to be an expert in something, you can ask them what their authority is. I get to make this video for you because I have a master's degree in library and information science. Uh, I've been a teaching librarian for several years and I have online teaching credentials. So that's my authority. You should question it. You should question everybody's authority. Uh, you should search the article to make sure it's accurate. Is the information backed up by evidence? Is the site reliable? And this seems like a no brainer, but you know, it's really easy to design a website that looks competent. It doesn't have to be competent. It's really easy to design one that looks competent. And you can get a .com domain really cheaply. You can get one for about $20 a year. So it's not even a huge sacrifice to try to get one of these. So you really wanna do some research and say, okay, is this accurate? And then you wanna ask yourself, what is the purpose of this article? Why was it written? Everything is written for a reason, right? Sometimes it's to entertain us, sometimes it's to inform us, sometimes it's to sell us stuff, sometimes it's to make us feel ways about things. So you wanna to say to yourself, okay, why was this article written? What is the point? And I know that sounds like a lot. I know that we are asking you to essentially research your research. The good news is, it, the, is that by using the library databases and the library resources, those have undergone a cursory crap test. That's my little phrase that I like to use. And what that means is that we have examined them to make sure that their material in there is good. Now, does that mean you should not, you know, use your critical thinking skills? It absolutely does not mean that. You should think critically about everything. If you find it in the library database, if you find it, um, you know, on the internet, if you see it on Twitter, you should always think critically about things. The library databases have undergone more of, you know, an examination and you're probably definitely not going to find anything that says prison reform is being spearheaded by a pug. So that's, you know, one of the big benefits. So I'm going to go ahead here and click on databases. It's going to give me my laundry list of databases here. We have 49 available to you. Don't worry, I'm not going to suggest that you look through all 49. Uh, today we're going to talk about three that I think are going to be really helpful. So the first one I want to talk about, I'm going to click on the letter O, and it's Opposing Viewpoints and Context. It's this third one down here. So I'm going to click on that and it's going to pull my database up for me. This is a really great database when you're doing a project on contemporary issues like this. You know, you can see right away from my splash page that, you know, my featured topics are LGBTQ rights, 
students and homework, debate topics, school uniforms, gun control. These are things we hear about in the news all the time. So this is a really good resource for contemporary issues. And there are a couple of ways that, that we can search it. One thing we can do is to type our search topic in. Up here at the top, you can type in your keywords, or you can go over here to browse issues. And if I click on that, it's gonna give me a list of issues that are available to me in this database. So I'm talking about prisons, right? I'm gonna go ahead and scroll down and click here on prisons. And it's gonna give me an overview of, you know, this is what you're gonna find in this section of the database. Here are the way the different re uh, results are broken down. So I can see I have 267 academic journals, 280 viewpoints, and viewpoints is something that this database does really, really well. It's called Opposing Viewpoints in Context, and it does just that. It gives you a point and a counterpoint. And as researchers, that's, that's really important. Uh, we all have a confirmation bias. I have one, you have one, your instructor has one, everybody has one. Um, we like to find information that verifies what we already think we know. But in order to be a responsible researcher and a responsible student, what we really need to do is look at point A, point B, and then decide for ourselves what we think the correct answer is. So this database is going to lay out different points and you can sort of look at them and then make up your own mind. Like, okay, I see uh, we must not criminalize policy and at the same time we need more resources, right, to process presidential pardons. So those two things, I'm sorry, are not really connected, but you understand my point. You can read both articles and come to sort of an agreement in your mind of what you think the correct answer is. So I have 280 viewpoints, I have 28,000 newspaper articles, 1,000 magazine articles, that's a lot. I, no one is going to suggest that you read through all those. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the search within results bar down here and we're gonna narrow it down a little bit. We are gonna look at another topic, right? You're not just talking about prisons. You're talking about something related to that topic. So we're gonna take our search within results bar and we're gonna put in our keyword search here. So in this case, mandatory sentences. I'm gonna click go. So I can see it gives me one featured viewpoint with that keyword search in here, but it also gives me um, you know, 398 news articles and 59 magazine articles. So that's really helpful. I'm gonna click here on my news articles. And once again, I don't expect you to read 398 articles. You can do a really quick crap test just looking at this list and decide whether or not you want to read it. Um, you are not going to hurt for information with this paper. It's not going to be, you know, where you have two or three articles that you have to make work. The issue for you is going to be taking all of the resources available to you and finding the right ones. So if something doesn't look good for you, don't even bother with it. Don't even waste your time reading an article that's not going to work for you. There are plenty available. So I can do my quick crap test looking at this. I can say, okay, I only want things in the last five years, 2019, this all meets that, okay. So now what I can do is take a look and say, all right, so let me take a look at the titles and see if the titles are something that could help me. Okay, White House celebrates criminal justice overhaul, budget for criminal justice. Like what about this one? He got life for selling crack, a signature could free him. That sounds like something that might be able to help me, right? So I click on the article here. I can see it's from the New York Times. It's from December 2018. That's good stuff. All fitting in my crap test here. And then I have the article right in front of me. It's gonna highlight my keywords in red. But another trick, if I wanna go through the article quickly, is to use Control and F. And I'm in Google Chrome, so that brings up this box right here. Uh, in Firefox, I think it's down here in this corner. In Edge, I believe it's over here. But what I can do is use this to search the document for my keywords. So, mandatory. 
So I just typed in mandat, right? Just the beginning of the word. And I can see that that comes in, comes up in this article eight times. So that's going to help me. It doesn't tell me the context. It doesn't tell me, you know, how the word is being used. But I can see that it is being used eight times. So that can really help me with the R part of my crap test, with the relevance part. When I go through this, I can see, okay, here are my eight things here. And one of the things that the, uh, this database does really well is it allows me to highlight sections of the article. Um, because you're likely going to be sending yourself a lot of different articles. If you're like me, I have a tendency to send myself things and forget why I wanted them in the first place. So this database helps you avoid that problem. I can highlight the text that I like, click highlight here, pick a color, and I can even add a note. Like um, sentencing. And I can save my note here. I can go up here to my tools section and I can see that my highlights and notes are saved in there. That's great. And I can also see that there are several ways that I can get this article to myself. I can send it to Google Drive. I can send it to OneDrive. I can print it. I can email it to myself. All of that's going to be really helpful. And if you find an article that works for you, I highly recommend that you utilize one of these options to get it to yourself. You're always going to want more articles than you think you need. If you sit down to write your paper with the bare minimum of articles, chances are that one of them is not going to work for you, not going to work the way you wanted it to, so you're going to have to stop what you're doing, stop writing your paper, go back, do the research process again. It's a huge pain. You don't want to go through it. It's not worth it. So if you find an article that looks good, Google Drive, OneDrive, print, email, anything it takes to get the article to yourself. Um, if you don't use it, that's the worst that happens. You don't use it. It is an email you delete. It is a piece of paper you throw away. I always liken this to your spare tire. Like, you, I don't ever think about my spare tire, but I'm really, really glad I have it when I get a flat. So, you know, I hope you never need it, but it's always good to have more things than you think you need. And the database makes it so easy to get them to you. There's really no reason not to. And like, if I wanted to print this article here, I can see that it's going to keep my highlights. So that passage that I was highlighting, it's, it's kept in there. And here's my note about why I wanted it in the first place. So that just makes your life a lot easier, right? And of course, if I do decide to use something from this article, I have to cite it, correct? I mean, there are a number of reasons why we have to cite things. I often ask students, why do I need to cite? And I've gotten a very fun variety of answers um, because my teacher says I have to, because I don't want to plagiarize, to give credit where credit is due, to continue the scholarly conversation. All of these are correct. Whatever your reason for citing is, just know that you have to do it. You're using MLA format, and a lot of students are feeling more comfortable with that now. If you're not, I, that's okay. I completely get it. I'm still a little shaky on it sometimes. I'm going to show you some resources uh, later on in the presentation where you can get help in the library. But all of our databases have this lovely citation tools button. So when I click on that, it gives me an MLA 8 citation. Now, it's just pulling from what it sees in the article. It's not thinking about it and making sure that it's correct. So you want to make sure that everything is you know, spelled correctly, that the capital, capitalization and spacing are correct. You want it to match the format that your instructor wants uh, when you're turning in your MLA 8 paper, because that's really who you're writing for. But this is a good, you know, it's a good foundation. Trust but verify. It's good, you're more than welcome to use it, but just make sure it's correct because you don't want to get any points taken off for something silly, like having an improperly spaced MLA citation. Okay, so that is opposing viewpoints. That is the first database that we're gonna go through. The next one we're gonna go through and take a look at is gonna be under the letter M. M like Mary, M like Megan, and M like Moss Ultra. So I can see that Moss Ultra gives me magazines, reference books, biographies, primary documents, and images. Again, really helpful when studying contemporary issues. Now it looks a little bit different than Gale, um, but the functionality is going to be the same. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start out by putting in my topic. So I'm going to put in opioid crisis. So what I want to do is, you know, you see I'm putting an opioid crisis and it wants me to fill in other things here like opioid crisis or opioid epidemic or epidemic or, you know, opioid academic or opioid abuse. You want to take a look when it's trying to fill the topics in for you and see if it's saying the same thing in a different way. Because the database only knows what I tell it, right? If I give it opioid crisis, that's the only thing it's going to look for. It's not going to know that I also mean opioid epidemic. I have to set that up. So I want it to look for this phrase or this phrase. So that's going to be really helpful. I want it to look in all of the text of the article. On my next line here, I'm going to drop down. I have my Boolean search operators here, which is just a fancy way of saying linking words. You're probably going to use and the most. So I'm going to do and, and I'm going to put in the word prison. And once again, I'm on my select field here. I'm going to look in all text for the article. So click search. And it gives me 261 results, right? And I can see that it's currently looking from 2014 to 2019. That's where it's pulling stuff in this database. So that's great. That is well within my crap test time. Um, if this is pulling from something you might have noticed in the when we were clicking on the database, it this database collects information from 1975 on. So if you notice that yours is a much bigger time span you might want to take your little slidey guy here and pull him over uh, to, until you reach that magical five, 10 year period. But right now I think I'm good. 261, that's a lot. Again, I'm not going to go through and read 261 articles. I'm going to do my craft test. Okay, overdose and punishment. So I can see here's the title of my article. Here's where it's from. Here's when it was written. And this is going to be super helpful to me, the subjects line here. These are the subjects that the author has assigned to their article. And this is going to be helpful not only to tell me what the article is going to be about, um, but also to give me some good ideas about what are some other keywords I can search. If you find yourself getting stuck, this is going to be really helpful. Pull keywords from down here. So I can tell by looking at the title of the article as well as, you know, where it's from and the keywords, kind of what it's about. I can also take my mouse and hover over the little piece of paper and magnifying glass. So it's going to give me my who, what, where, when, why. And it's also going to give me an abstract. Uh, an abstract is, of course, a summary of an article. So this is going to be helpful for me if deciding if I want to read the article. I can take a look at what the article is about. If it fits into my topic, go ahead and continue. If it doesn't, there's no need to, right? No need to try to take that square peg and force it into the round hole. Plenty of uh, results and articles available to you. So only use what you think is gonna work. For the purposes of this, I am going to pretend that this works for me. So I'm gonna click on PDF full text here. And it's going to present the article to me just like I have it in front of me when it loads. There we go. So it's going to present it just like I have the magazine in front of me. I can scroll through here. I can see the pictures, all sorts of good stuff. I have some charts and stuff here um, available to me too. That's excellent. I can use my control F trick. And EBSCO has available to me. Moss Ultra is an EBSCO database right here. It has available to me the sidebar as well. It's not as cleanly spelled out as scale, but that's okay. I can send this to my Google Drive. I can print it. I can email it to myself. If I'm feeling super ambitious, I can create an account in EBSCO and put it in a folder. And of course, I have my citation page here. So this little yellow piece of paper is gonna be my citation page. So scroll down to MLA. And you know how we talked about earlier, we're going to trust but verify because it's only pulling you know, from the article itself. Here's a really good example of that. 
it doesn't pay attention to the capitalization, right? It knows that Zoe Carpenter wrote this and Zoe Carpenter's name is all in caps here. So Zoe Carpenter's name is all in caps here too. So we definitely wanna check and make sure that everything is correct before we turn it in. So that is our Moss Ultra database, super helpful. The last database I wanna talk about is under the letter U, which is US Newsstream. So US Newsstream is a database that pulls articles from both national and local newspapers going back decades, just super far back, uh, which is great if you're doing you know, archival research as well. But what I really love this database for is I always tell students, if you ever find yourself running into a paywall, don't pay anything. Like if you are reading the New York Times and they say, we're sorry, you have reached your five free articles this month. You cannot have any more. Don't give them any money. They'll say, give us $2.99, you can have the article. Don't do that, please. Just come over to this database and you can get all of the articles you need right here. We already pay for all that. There's no need for you to pay for it too. So there are a few ways that I can search this database. Um, I'm gonna start out with my keyword again, and I am gonna do prison reform. I'm gonna make that my, my keyword here. I'm gonna leave this in anywhere. There are a, a number of ways I can search. I can look in the abstract, I can look in the subject headings, author name, document title. Um, I'm gonna keep it pretty broad right now. I'm gonna cast a broad net with, with my research. But what I am gonna do is I'm gonna go down here to my second line. And instead of anywhere, I'm gonna click publication title. And I am gonna look in the New York Times. I only want to know what the New York Times says about prison reform. So I'm looking for this phrase in the New York Times. And right now I'm looking for prison and reform as two separate words. That's just the way the database is set up. If I wanted to link these words, I would put them in quotation marks. So that is how I would link the words. So one thing I am gonna do, right now I'm looking at all dates. And I know that newspapers are published every day. So I run the risk of getting a ton of results. And with research, I really don't want to, I don't want to paint myself into a corner where I only get two results, but I also don't want a Google situation where I have 800 million. It's just too many to go through and then you get really overwhelmed, right? So I think what I'm gonna do is use this right here. I'm gonna go for the last three years. That's what I want to see is the last three years. And I can make it as narrow as seven days. Um, I can pick a specific date or date range, which is really helpful if you're interested in a particular historical event and wanting to see how the world reacted to it. The date range is going to be super helpful. In this case, three years. I want to see what happened in the last three years with prison reform in the New York Times. So I'm going to click search. And I have 20 articles, which really isn't that bad, right? 20 articles in three years, not, not too, too bad. I should, well, you know what? I'm so wrong, guys. Do you see what I did? Select one through 20 right here. I was looking at this. <laughs> Just kidding. I have 1,700 results. So that's a little different than 20. 1,700 is better than 8 million or 80 million or whatever we had on Google. But my goodness, this is, um, this is a lot to go through. So once again, we're going to do the craft test. We're going to look here and say, okay, what can I take away from this stuff? How can I learn about this? So I can see, all right, this is from New York Times Online policy. I can get abstract and details here. So when I click on that, it will give me a quick one sentence here. Offers less opportunity to prison, for prisoners to move. I can see, you know, who wrote it, when, here are the subjects that, that it uh, associates with my article. And then when I want the full text, I can of course click on that. This is a really short article, so I probably won't need my control and F trick, but that of course will work here. Um, also pay attention to this uh, related items over here. A lot of times you'll see like uh, related items on web pages that have absolutely nothing to do with what you're doing. This is not the case here. 
This is going to be things that you might actually be interested, that might actually help you. Right, here are subject terms in case you need some more you know, ideas on what to search. And of course, I have my little sidebar up here where I can email, save, print, and save as PDF. The one thing I don't like about this database is they have not updated their MLA format yet. We've been on MLA 8 for a couple years now, and I don't know why US Newsstream has not gotten with the program, but they haven't. So you really would not want to copy and paste this. You would want to make sure it matches MLA 8 format. There are subtle but significant differences, so definitely keep that in mind. So those are the three databases that I wanted to talk about with you guys today. Um, the good news is that because this is a video, you have the luxury of you know, rewinding it and listening to something over if you feel like you have a question. But if you don't really want to go back and figure out where I was talking about what, under research help here, we have guides by subject. If I scroll down to what my class is, English 101, nonfiction resources, here is a whole guide that we have created for you, right? Everything we talked about. Here's how to find print books and electronic books in, in the library. Here is how to find some news and media articles, right? That we talked about opposing viewpoints and context with example, and US Newsstream with example. Encyclopedias and reference, here's Moss Ultra and the example of what to do. Here's the evaluating sources page. So if you are, you know, if you can't quite remember what the CRAP test stands for, we have that available to you right here. It's almost kind of a fun picture of Bat Child. Very eye catching. Um, we have a whole section, Orange is the New Black resources here, that we have gone through and done the CRAP test on for you. And of course, we have a citation help page here. Um, I know students are getting more and more comfortable with MLA 8 citations, and that's awesome. If you're not super comfortable or have any questions, this is a good place to go. We have some handouts available for you, some videos, um, some different links available, and this little PowerPoint presentation where you can click through and see how to cite things, right? And of course, one of the most valuable things you have available to you is right here, right? We talked about our contact us information in the beginning, but I wanna call your attention to it again. Um, you have several friendly librarians here on your staff and we want to help you. We're here to help you and we have all done this before. You know, we, you guys are going to move on to another class and keep going and I'm going to keep on working on English 101 stuff with our instructors because I love it. But that means that we are pretty good at finding stuff like we have looked up these topics before. So please don't hesitate to reach out and contact us. You can call us, you can email us, text us, live chat, we're on Facebook and Instagram, and I say that not only because I think we're kind of fun to follow, but I've had students reach out to me on both of these platforms, and I'll absolutely answer you with research questions or any questions you have on there. Whatever is easiest for you. We can set up an appointment if you want. Uh, you can do that either in person or virtually, either one is fine. But please, don't hesitate to ask for help. Um, I took a lot of online classes when I was a student. My entire master's degree was done online. And I know that while it affords you a lot of freedom, you can also feel kind of alone, right? Because it's just you, there's not a whole lot of interaction. You're not alone, please know that, that we are here to help you. Utilize this, ask us for help. Whenever you need us, do that. Come, out, come on over to the library, whatever it takes, get the help you need. Bought my video back. See, this is me again, Elizabeth, an actual person, an actual human here to help you. Come and find me if you need any help or any of our helpful uh, librarians. My email is ecook, E C O O K, at citruscollege.edu if you need anything. Good luck. You're all going to do great. I have total faith in you. And thank you for watching this video.